near-death experiences. Um, it turned out one of the doctors in San Francisco thought that I had, um, they thought that I had uh, diabetes type 2. So they put me on all this medicine, but nothing ever worked at all. And so we finally found out, I went into emergency one day just feeling awful, and it turned out that my blood sugar was 7. And normal blood sugar is between 70 and 130. If you get down to the 20s, you typically are in a coma and you die. So for me to have it at 7 is remarkable, you know. And I was delirious and I had all these stories that fabricated and there was bonded on the ceiling and, you know, they were trying to kill me and just all this stuff that was crazy, you know, and certainly not me at all, you know. I went through that. but. The doctor came to me at the end of seven days, and he, when I finally came out of it, uh, he said, I cannot believe what a strong will you have. And I said, I don't have a strong will. It's God carrying me. God is the one that has seen me through this. And I credit God with my strength that I have. And um, so, as I said, God is good. There's a lot of things that he has done. The other thing was that I went into adrenal crisis and a coma. When I went in for surgery for my knee, I was in rehab for three months, and it, I couldn't put any weight on my knee or anything. But what happened is that I had gotten C. diff, which is a real bad diarrhea and vomiting, which is horrendous. You have no control over it. And all night long, I was sick with this. And what I didn't realize, because you're so sick, you don't really know what's going on. I had told them about it, you know, that I had to have prednisone in stressful situations. And also after surgery, I have to have it for a time period. And prednisone is a good drug, and it's also a very wicked drug. And uh, one of the things that I ended up having is that, um, uh, you know, because you have all the problems that I was having at that time, that morning when I woke up, I couldn't open my eyes, I couldn't move, I couldn't do anything. All I could do was hear. And I was in an adrenal crisis coma. And because I don't have function of the pituitary at all because of the tumor that I had. And one of the things that was very um, scary is that they were talking, saying that I didn't want to take my medicine. I did not, the nurses were saying I didn't want to take my meal that morning. And I'm sitting there going, yes, I do. I wanted to take it, but I can't. You know, and I was trying to make some way of communicating with them. And I realized all I could do was just pray because I couldn't do anything else. And so, um, it's funny to feel so trapped in a place. And my husband happened to come early that morning, and he came and looked at my face. I was ashen gray, and he took a hold of my hand, and he said, I'll be back. And he knew immediately what was going on. Uh, and he ran to the nurses and said, we've got to take care of this because we've got to get a hold of the doctor and get her in medicine right away. And they did, and my husband saved the day, fortunately. So that was a nice thing. I also have uh, fibromyalgia, GERD. Um, I have a, a, oh, a unknown mass near my optic nerve, and just a ton of other health problems. I just don't have all the day to tell you all about it. But one of the things I do want to say is that when uh, you're ill as much as I've been ill, you do a lot of thinking about, well, why is this happening to me? Um, I was a faithful servant of God. I was all through my life, and I lived a healthy life. I read my Bible. I prayed all the time to my loving God, and I did. I felt like Job, you know, because I was morally honest, kind, and loving person. And I couldn't understand what was going on that I, what I was doing to not let God uh, come and help me during this time, and why I was so sick. It never let up. Every year there was something new. Are chronically going on all the time and I'm 62 years old and it's been going on since I was 23 and um, but I want you to know that God knows why you're suffering you may not know why you're suffering but God knows why you're suffering and there's comfort in that and uh, we also want answers you know when we're suffering and we ask why but I remind myself that God's ways are perfect and wisdom and goodness, and I know that he is doing everything in my best interest. And some people can bear the blame for their pain, like they did not obey common sense, you know, or they didn't eat healthy, or they were careless, or they were drinking, or whatever. And God is chastising them because of the sin in their life. 
But there had not been any sin in my life to speak of. I mean, we're all sinful creatures, of course. But there was nothing serious in my, in my uh, life to cause this much pain. And one of the things that I knew that is God knows why I'm going through this. And he has shown this, that even unexplained suffering has a valuable purpose. Uh, he will use the suffering of someone we know and love to make us more compassionate, kinder, and more helpful. And he may let us suffer, but he gives us such supernatural grace that we will be, uh, that we will be a vibrant testimony to his glory. We may not understand the why we are suffering, but God does, and that's comforting in that. Thank you so much. I appreciate being able to, to talk with you today, and I just hope I want you to know that I'm here for you. I'm with the original group of, of Mosaic. You know, I wanted to help out young people uh, who were having suffering. And if you have any illness in your family or friends and you want to talk about it, please, by all means, come to me and, and talk to me because I'm very open to talking about everything. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Goodbye. Thank you.